Hey, welcome back and thanks for sticking it out through every part of the series so far. I really love revisiting this topic and these passages because God has taken me on such a sweet journey with it so far in my life. If you're a Bible person, you can flip to the book of Luke chapter 10 verses 38 through 42. This might be a story you're familiar with, but I hope to highlight some aspects of it that might have been glossed over in the past. Plus, this is crucial to this one thing and this desire conversation we've been having. Here's what it says. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Without getting too preachy, Jesus is this same existing one that we defined on one of those other videos. But the crazy thing is that this God who is infinite and personal, like King David's view of the world says, he put limits on himself in order to get down to our level, the level of his creation. And that's Jesus. But man did that escape most people of his day. This passage about Mary and Jesus shows us that not everybody missed it. Though. She was someone who realized that she got to be face to face with Jesus, with this King, with this God that David was looking forward to a thousand years before him. Mary was one of the few who was actually able to fully appreciate the beauty and the strength and the love and the power of Jesus, the God man. She sat at his feet and listened to his words, no regard for any other thing or pressure, even the social pressures to serve him. She wanted to be with him and listen to his words, not to be busy making food and drink. All that prep and serving would have cost her being in his presence. Jesus' commentary on Mary's behavior is as follows. Turning to her sister, he says, Martha, Martha, you are troubled and anxious about many things, but one thing is necessary. Catch that callback to the psalm written by David a thousand years before. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Most people mistook Jesus for an average man, but Mary saw him for who he really was, and she put all of her longing and all of her desire and all of her hopes on his shoulders, and he stood for him. And Jesus says that that will not be taken away from her. In light of cars breaking down, jobs getting outsourced, technology becoming obsolete, so on and so forth, all these things are marketed at our desires to be satisfied. But Jesus isn't a product with empty promises. He is both man and God at the same time. The existing one who is powerful and beautiful and he's interested in you and he's interested in me. To finish all this off, I want to leave you with a call to action. God is the sole thing. He is the sole one to be desired above all else. The last part of the verse that we were reading in the Psalms says that David wants to inquire in God's temple. I want to challenge you to take stock of your wants. Where have they left you? What did they leave you feeling? What has, is yet to be desired? Consider this an opportunity for you to look to God to satisfy all the deep and confused and hurting places inside of you. Inquire in his temple just like David said he longed to do. Go someplace quiet and get alone with him to be in his presence, which is more desirable than anything else. I love you all and let me know how your journey goes.